When you're talking about building large structures in road construction, you're going to be dealing with two kinds. The first is underground. These are the large reinforced concrete box culverts used for drainage or for carrying pedestrians or vehicles. The second kind of structure is basically above ground. The bridges that cross over water and other drainage areas, over railroads or under railroads, and over other roads. Bridges and culverts have something in common. They're not built from the ground up, they're built from below the ground up. That means first, you have to dig. But wait, before you start building that bridge or culvert, you need to be aware of the other structures that are already there, like railroad tracks and power lines. These can not only get in the way as you work, but there are also accidents waiting to happen. For example, everyone knows that you stay clear of a power line, but did you know that you don't have to touch it to be electrocuted? Depending on the amount of power flowing through the line, you can be as much as 15 or 20 feet away, and it could arc through you to the ground. Above the ground, the hazards are obvious, but below ground, they're not so easy to spot. That's why before you dig, all utility companies must be contacted to relocate their structures or identify those they can't move. The flag color should tell you if it's electrical wires, communication cables, gas lines, water lines, or sewer lines. Once you know what you're getting into, you can start digging carefully. If you're not paying attention to what's there, and you cut off one of those utilities, you could seriously impact a lot of people, sometimes in life-threatening ways. And you can also get yourself hurt or killed. For instance, if you cut into a gas main, the tiniest spark could engulf you in flames. And how deep did you really think that gas main was? Warning tapes are helpful. But more often than not, you won't be warned about how close you're getting to it. So know what you're getting into before you dig. These rigs are powerful. They're moving fast, and most likely, the operator can't see you. So you'd better give it plenty of room. When you start getting below ground level, Gravity can be a killer. See that dirt that's just been exposed? Looks pretty harmless. But given the right conditions, it can move like lightning, suffocating you in the middle of a thought. And like lightning, it gives no warning before it hits. Being alert isn't enough. You have to protect yourself before it happens. That's why a trained person on your crew should specify the right safety procedures and equipment. Then use it. If dirt can fall into a hole, so can anything else. If you're too close to that edge, you just may be digging your own grave. Excavating in or around water, you're going to be driving sheet piling to frame the coffer dam that'll keep the water out of the hole. There's a lot to be careful about in this situation. Coffer dams are tough for crane operators because they can't see down into the hole. They need guidance from someone who knows what they're doing. Once again, you're going to have gravity working against you. You need three contact points with the ladder at all times. Everything's going to be coming down in your direction. If something falls in, you don't have much room to maneuver. Know where you are and where you can go fast. 
The safest place is near the wall. Driving piling in coffer dams complicates the situation even more. Now, in addition to the water and muck, you've got to contend with the pounding noise of the hammer and the smoke and oil in the air. Probably the most important piece of equipment is the crane. Cranes are going to be around for almost the entire project, so you better get used to them. But don't take them for granted. For some reason, cranes seem to be fatally attracted to power lines. Best to stay clear of them. Cranes are just like backhoes. They'll catch you on the front side with the swing, and they'll catch you on the back side with the counterweight. That's why they often have flexible safety poles sticking out around them. These dangers are constantly around you, from excavating to backfilling. As you move up to ground level, the potential for a gravity accident goes down. So you might think it's getting safer, that you're out of danger. That's when you get fooled. You just have new hazards to watch out for. The point is, you've got to be thinking all the time about what's going on around you. Accidents happen when you think you're the safest. As work starts going up, you have to start worrying about gravity again. Like below ground level, up high, you don't have much room to make a mistake or to move out of the way if something is coming at you, like a swinging 50-ton beam. It's not going to stop swinging just for you. Setting beams is a tricky business. It's one of the few times when two cranes are used together to lift the same load. Here, you've really got to be on your toes and working together. If a concrete beam just shifts from its vertical position to where it's on its side, it could literally explode because of the pre-stressed forces inside of it. You don't want to be around when that happens. When you're working up high, gravity will influence you and everyone around you. Watch what you're doing! Oh my god! Use your safety equipment. Objects that can fall on you, other than people, can range from nails and hammers to concrete and steel. When rebars fall, they don't come straight down. They're flimsy and they'll scatter like pickup sticks. If you're underneath, give them plenty of room. When you're pouring concrete, you now have a load of ready-mix trucks you have to watch out for. Truck drivers have a hard time seeing behind them. That's why they have that warning alarm. It's telling you that they can't see you, but they're coming anyway. So you better see them. On any structure, a lot of different work is going on at the same time. It's a team effort, but everyone's busy doing their own job, so you don't get in their way. If you're an inspector, your job is to get in, get out, and get to a safe spot to do your testing. Like I said, whenever you're on a structure's job, at any stage of development, there isn't much room to get out of harm's way. 
If there's traffic around, you'll have even less room. That's why you've got to be extremely vigilant at all times. You can't make stupid mistakes. You can't be not thinking because it gets worse. You're going to be working out there all year long in every kind of weather. In the cold, numbing your brain so you can't concentrate or think straight. In the rain, ruining your visibility, making everything slippery. In the heat and humidity, sapping your energy and spirit. And in the ever constant wind blowing you around. These aren't hazards, they're distractions, keeping you from being alert to what's going on around you. Not to mention that you still have your job to worry about. That's why your attitude is so important. It's your biggest safety factor, being constantly aware of the dangers around you. If you don't know what's going on, there's no harm in asking. And on structures, there's a lot of harm going to come your way if you don't ask. Construction is really a team effort. When you're putting a structure up, everyone should know what's going down.